Good luck, Jim Savage from Queensland from the Gold Coast. Hey, a little disappointing. It was going to be a title match, but your opponent unavailable. Jim Savage. Uh, you know much about him? Heath, you have gradually coming down the weight. Neil and Greg have been sort of. I mean, can you take something off? But you're gradually coming down the weight, which means you're you're fighting uh, guys that uh, are not as big. So it's it's important to come down the weight if you take that extra kilos off. Yeah, I know. Well, I think my last fight was a little bit, and I won that easy. So, but this fight was a title, so we've got a half minute that you can feel. So, yeah. What can you promise the fans tomorrow night? A good fast, exciting fight. Heath Ellis, the Heath! Be there tomorrow night because he's a hot shot against Queensland's Jim Savage. Well, you young, what the fuck you expect? Yep, yep. Grand opening, grand closing. Goddamn, your man holds. Crack the can open again. Who you gonna find open a head with no pen? Just draw up inspiration. Who you gonna see? You can't replace him with cheap imitations of these generations. How will they pay you? When you first come in the game, they try to play you. Then you drop a couple of hits, look how they wait to you. From Marcy to Madison Square, to the only thing that matters is just a matter of years. As fate would have it, J status appears to be at an all time high. Perfect time to say goodbye. When I come back like Joy, we in the 4 5. It ain't to play games with you. It's the aim at you. Probably name you. If I owe you, I'm blowing you to slithereens. Cops set the tape one for your team. And I need you to remember one thing. One thing. I came, I saw, I conquered. The record sales, we sold out concerts. So motherfucker, if you want this encore, I need you to scream to your lungs and so come on. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Murray Thompson. Welcome to Fort Knox on a very historic night. Tonight, Murray Thompson celebrates 40 giant shows. It's his 40th anniversary show here tonight. 
and congratulations to Murray Thompson, Fighters Factory. Last Sunday, he was voted Victoria's leading amateur trainer for 2006, 2007. And what a night of boxing we've got for you. Not only have we the Australian Welterweight Championship rematch between Queensland's Paul Tornado Tapley and Victoria's Eddie Psychedelic, we've also got the IBF Pan Pacific Super Lightweight Championship with Sugar Ray Whitley, Vice President of the IBF, here at ringside to present that championship belt. The winner of that fight will go to the top 20 in the world. The IBF Pan Pacific Super Lightweight Championship. That's our main event. We'll get the show rolling on the 40th anniversary fight night for Murray Thompson. Fort Knox, Friday night fights. Six rounds of interstate welterweight boxing. Introducing first on my left, from Queensland's Gold Coast, wearing gold trunks with Pit Boss and Savage, which is his name emblazoned on the front. 15 professional fights, nine wins, six losses, wrecked in Ray Wheatley's World of Boxing, number 12, what the weight in Australia. At 63.40, ladies and gentlemen, would you welcome Queensland's Jim Savage. Savage. And across the ring in the blue corner, with Greg Grogan from the Kingsbury Gym. This young man comes from Greenvale, with his father, Neil Ellis at ringside, Keith Ellis, senior at ringside. Coming off a spectacular amateur career, where he won five championships. He's still 18 years of age in professional boxing. Four bouts, four wins, two inside the distance. Made his big debut here on Fox Sports last year at 64.6. Zero kilograms, gold, blue and tassels. They call him the Heat, Heath Allen. <laughs> Malcolm, the raging bull bullner, your referee. Judges, Jim Slatter. Brian Memory and Bryce Slipwistle. Your time here with the bell, Damien Memory. In your inside position, Dr. John Jury. Malcolm, it's all yours. Here we go. I thought they're going to pick up Malcolm's instructions, uh, Frankie. Frankie Rope is welcome to the commentary box tonight, pal. We Thanks, worked together Gus. before and uh, look forward to this this time too. Yeah, I'll, I'll be looking very much forward to it. This should be a good one with the young, uh, the Heat there, Heath Ellis over there in the blue corner. Jim Savage, uh, don't know too much about him. He hasn't got a winning record, unfortunately. And uh, Heath uh, is going to come out like a buzzsaw, no doubt. He's had four fights. He's won two by knockout. He's won two others. Didn't look too good in his last two fights, as if he was ill or, or he wasn't fit or something. But uh, he's got amends to make, Frankie. Yeah. He's quite relaxed, he's composed, and he's not going bullet a gate. Well, the other occasions he did, he come out bullet a gate, and I think he come out too hard. Yeah. He's just take, getting his composure and he's sizing his man up at the moment. He's got a southpaw, he threw a perfect punch there against the southpaw too, that right hand, good one. Uh, Jim doesn't look too bad, actually. He wings him in there, doesn't he? Yeah, he's, he's going for the body. He's a good body puncher. Yep. He, he knows something about it. I can't understand with no wins, but he must have a, had a good amateur career, but no wins as a pro. Um, that can be a lot of reasons for that. Not in the right shape, taking the fights he shouldn't take, taking him when he shouldn't have taken them, you know? Well, he definitely knows his way about a boxing ring. Young Heath has got a, I think, maybe too much to look up to or too much to live up to. Sometimes they put too much aspirations on these kids and they, they got to be so worried about what's asked of them. Yeah. Good punches to the body, picking his punch as well. Clean good. punch, isn't he? Clean puncher and he's a good mover and he's composed. Oh, that's, yeah. that's what I like about him. This guy's put, Jimmy Savage is putting pressure on him and doing a good job of it at that and um, and the kids kept his composure which is quite good for an 18 year old and you know sometimes they bring these opponents down at the last moment and they're they're a little bit more than live meat this guy came to fight frankie 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, Jim Savage, he's, he's doing a good job in this first round. Um, Keith, Keith got him with a bit of a right hand there. He caught him with another left hand and a good rip. He's ripping he's well got, to the body. He's got a beautiful rip and a, and a good hook. He's got a rip hook. That's good. A little bit wide on, on uh, Savage's punches there. He's going to be careful because Heath will step right straight in the middle with them. Straight down the barrel. Yeah, but what impresses me is he's keeping his composure. Yeah. He's, he's not panicking. He's got the pressure put on him, and he's just keeping his composure. And he's warming to it. He's pacing himself, which is very important. And Jimmy, Jimmy's putting on good pressure. He's he certainly on is. Good pressure. He certainly is. Jimmy's putting pressure on him. He's not a. He's a live body. There's no doubt about that. He came to fight, and he'll give it his best as long as he can. How long that'll be, I don't know. Oh well, he's certainly got good defensive skills at the moment. He's not getting hit with any. Well, I gave that round to Heath. Um, I think it was pretty obvious he won that round. Heath. Ten oh, yeah, points. They were still, still filling each other out. There. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't. There was nothing dramatic happened in that round. No. No, it wasn't. Well, nothing dramatic, but Heath was ahead on the round. Yeah, on yeah. our card anyway. Yeah. Well, we've got to remind people, our cards are always um, unofficial. Yeah, with Jimmy, uh, he goes to the. He, okay. Jimmy's a good body puncher too, and so is he. Yeah. They're both good body punches. You, you don't see that too often. Here we go, round two of a scheduled six by three minute round fight with Jimmy Savage in the yellow trunks out of the red corner and Heath the Heat Ellis in the blue and tassel trunks, the blue with gold tassel trunks out of the blue corner. He's a, a comer. He's a lot's been asked of this boy, and uh, he has delivered in the four fights he's had so far. Jim Savage is giving him a battle, and as Frank Rope has said, the, the the composure on Heath is very good, and Jim Savage is testing him out. And that now Heath's taking the fight up to Jim. Well, this this could be. Got to keep your eyes on this one now, because if if Heath goes on the on the hunt. He may find his uh, his victim very soon. Yeah, well, he, he, he sort of like warmed to the first round. He was pacing himself, feeling his way. And um, now he's just opening up a little bit more. Well, he's looking better these uh, these first two rounds than he looked in his last couple of fights. I'll tell you that right now. He's got good balance on his Ooh. feet. Good right hand to the body, straight right into the body. Good punch for an orthodox fighter to use against the southpaw. He doesn't waste any energy. Everything is positive. Yeah. He wants to in close. He doesn't want to let that guy get away with too much of that sort of business. Though. He has to work in close as well as working to the body as he does when he's out and coming in. He has to work in close also. Yeah. Can't let the other guy take a lead like that because those punches, if they land with the knuckle part of the glove and a scoring part of the body, count. And Heath, uh, Heath has got brilliant hand speed. Yeah, he certainly has. Very fast with his hands. And he's a good welterweight. He looks like he's a more super lightweight to me than welterweight, but uh, still in all, he's growing, just a kid. Well, he, you know, like he's got a, he's an 18-year-old boy, yeah. and um, there's a lot of potential there for his yeah. body. Good punches there. If that, other, if that last left hook would have landed on the button, I think that might have been the end. Could have been a good night. It's a good card to open up, a good fight to open up the card with. It is a good fight. And, and Jimmy, you know, it takes two to tango, and Jimmy's given it his best. Exactly, it takes two, just as you said. Uh, and, uh, 
He's not overawed by the, the not his at opponent. All. And he seems to be in fairly good shape too because he's putting the pressure on, he's keeping it up. Yeah. There it is. Round two. This is Amanda. That, that was, uh, I, th I gave that round to Heath. He started uh, being a lot more productive. How about that? We try to get in when Howard's not speaking. Sometimes it's hard because Howard likes to speak a bit. <laughs> but like you said, yes, it was a good round for Heath. He um, he, uh, he he saw things and did things pretty nicely in there. And Jim Savage is giving him a battle. Well, the good thing about it was he, he was feeling Jimmy Savage out, Heath. And he didn't go where Angel's feared to tread. He's just feeling, pacing himself, keeping his composure. And that's what good fighters do. And, and for him to be able to do that at the age of 18, it's brilliant. Third round. Start of the third round of six rounds. Heath Ellis winning the... Oh, Heath got hit with the left hand there. Jimmy Savage is giving him a trial. Jimmy Savage has not shirked the, uh, what, the Jimmy, job at all. Jimmy Savage... Um, He's surprising me. He's a lot better than I anticipated. He is. He is. A, He's a worthy opponent. Particularly when you get these foes in the last moment because he is a substitute. His, his first opponent pulled out with a hurt hand. So Jimmy Savage come in as a substitute, and sometimes these guys aren't as fit or as, as good as they could be. This guy looks the goods. He does, and he, he's also keeping his composure. He's not overawed by the, the whole thing. Yeah. Not overawed at all. He's come here to fight, and uh, he's doing a pretty good job of it against a good opponent. He's got pretty good power, too, the way yeah. it looks. Yeah, he's got a bit of sting in his punches, too. Ah. He's got a good chin, too, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> he says, is that all you got? Jimmy Savage says, come on. You can hit hard in that, can you? Tell you what, there's some power in those punches. He's definitely not overawed. He's, he, he, he's come here to fight. Good one. Good two punches there. A right-hand jab lead, and he followed with a left-hand. Good punches. They landed the scoring punches. And he's also keeping his composure. He's not wasting his, his energy. Everything he's doing is productive and positive. And he's not panicking under he's pressure? He's not panicking at all. <laughs> Those punches are going to start catching up to him, I'm afraid, though. Oh, he's showing no signs. Not right now, he's not, no. Oh, oh, very, very good. Now, Heath has to be very careful. His hands up, the name of this game is hands up, head down. And I tell you what, Jimmy Savage pulled that round out with that punch. And again. Heath has to be very careful, I can't take this guy too lightly. And Jim Savage got to do just what he's doing. Well, Jab yeah. and followed him with that powerful left hand of his. That was a very good round. Yes, I gave that to Jim, tell you the truth. I gave Jim Savage that round. And deservedly so, too. Yes, that big, uh, that big punch of his, that big left hand that went in there was a great punch. He's, uh, he looks pretty composed in the corner, too. He's actually nullifying Heath. He's putting the pressure on him. He's not allowing him to get balanced. And Heath's a brilliant fighter. Yeah. And he's restricting him at the moment. And uh, he's, he's actually, Jimmy's actually nullifying Heath. He's not allowing Heath to fight his fight. That's right. 
He's keeping him off balance. He's keeping the pressure on him. And uh, it's a good fight for Heath. Here we go, round four. And uh, Heath is ahead on my card in any case. The other thing we have to say about this is that Heath's opponent is a substitute. Now, Heath, I don't know if he knew he was going to fight a softball, which he may have uh, befuddled him a bit. And he's not a bad southpaw. No, good one. He's worthy. He's worthy of the fight. Yeah, oh, my word, he is. He wants Heath, you know. He says, come on, come on, let's go. I want you. Those left hooks. Oh, that was a, he got a good chin, Jim Savage. Yeah, he has got a good chin, and, that, and Heath's got a good left hook. He's got a very good left hook, left yeah. rip, left hook. Malcolm had, had a, Malcolm, the referee, had a bit of a word with Jim Savage after that. I don't know exactly why. He did take a few very, very solid punches. Didn't seem to affect them that much. He gets all the weight of his hooks behind his punches. Yes. Yeah, he throws the whole body in there, doesn't he? Yeah. Not just an arm punch. Not just an arm punch with the rips and the hooks. Uh, Heath Ellis. See, and Jim Savage is always doing something. He's always doing something. He's, he's, he's no slouch. He's, he's just, he's come here to fight, and that's what he's doing. Heath is going to know he's been in a fight, I think, because he's uh, just barely going to get out of this round the way it looks now. But Jim is giving him a battle. Keep, he's still keeping his composure. Yeah. He hasn't, it hasn't flustered him. He's still keeping his composure and pacing himself. This is a good fight. It's a very good fight. And it's I take my hat off to Jimmy Savage because he's not overawed. And, he, and he's really given a Heath a, a bit of a scare. Yes, it's not normal that you see a substitute come down and do as well against a rated known fighter. No, that's right, but, but it does happen and Barry McGuigan lost his world title to a substitute. Yeah, yeah. Of course, he had a bit of desert heat to contend with, too, on that occasion. Oh, that he? was, yeah, terrible. Yeah. He dehydrated him. It's amazing he went the distance, yes. actually. How he lasted those last couple of rounds, I don't know, because he was out on his feet. I've yeah. given that round to Jim Savage, to tell you the truth. I, I thought it was bit pretty even. It's pretty even. I got the fight even, dead even. Yeah, 39, yeah, 39. yeah. Right now, because I've given Jim Sandwich the second, the third, well, and the fourth round. Well, he's in more control of the fight. It, it, he's dictating it a little bit more. He's, he's setting the motion for this guy. Yeah. And this guy is starting to have to follow his tune. Yeah, well, he, he's f fighting Jim's fight. Yeah. He's, he's not great. fighting his own fight. I'll have to find out a bit more about this guy because I can't understand not having any professional wins if I heard what Howard said correctly. I, no, I think, I think he's, he mentioned he had, I think, uh, 10 wins. I'm not sure. But he has won fights. He has definitely won fights. Here we go. Fifth round, five and six to go in this sixth rounder. I've got the fight on my unofficial card, dead even, having Heath Ellis winning the first two and Jimmy Savage yeah, well, squeezing in a win in the next two. Well, Jimmy Savage doesn't do much wrong. No, he doesn't. He doesn't do much wrong at all. He moves all right. He's got good balance, composure, and, you know, he's not allowing uh, Heath to get balanced to fight his fight. He's no, he hasn't. Heath has not landed a punch so far in this round. Oh. oh. Malcolm called that a, a slip. Well, he loaded that up. Yes, he did. For Heath, and he missed. Yeah.
He can punch too. Both can yes, punch. Yes, both can punch. I'm impressed with Savage's chin, very much so. Because and I he, think he, Savage is taking greater punches. He's got he's got a little nick over his left eye, yeah. but uh, he, he's got good defensive skills too. Yeah. little exchange there yes this Jimmy Savage is something else he is he's one out of the box I'll correct I'll find out from the announcer what this guy's record is and I'll let the the um, public know the other fans that are watching this yeah well he's taking the fight off Heath, Heath's got to do something. He's, yes, he can't. He's in trouble, and, and he's got to do something. He can't it, become complacent, Frankie. He is complacent. Yeah. Getting complacent, he's got to start upping the ante. That's right, well and truly. And, and, and it, whereas Jimmy's upping the ante. And I'm just wondering if the southpaw's affected him somewhat. If he's, if he's been... Well, uh, he, he's sort of... He's nullified him by keeping pressure on him. He's not letting yeah. him get balanced. Yeah. He's not letting him have his own way, and he and he doesn't like it. Yeah. Plus the fact he's awkward. He's a southpaw. Yeah. And he's got good evasive skills. He certainly too. has. He's not. Uh, he gets hit and he withstands the punches pretty well. But he doesn't. He's very good. He's extremely good with his defensive skills. So um, this is testing. This is going to test Heath's, Heath's character. Absolutely. Really is. Absolutely. I'm going to make that round even. Yep, same here. And, and, uh, Means the last round is the round that's going to tell the difference here. The sixth and last round. I think his corner better get a bit frantic over there. Maybe not frantic is the word I'm looking at, but uh, they better tell him that really and truly, it's not an easy one. It's got to, you've got to go out and do it this round. Yeah, this is but, your uh, round. but this, by the same token, he can't be taking any risks with this yeah, guy no, because he, no. he, can, he can punch yeah. and he can fight and he can do damage. He can, he can end his career if, if, if he Absolutely. Gets, and so, uh, Absolutely. you know, being young and, and only having a handful of fights. You know. I wanted to see what Malcolm was now. Sixth and final round. This ought to be a humdinger. This ought to be a cracker box fight right here because Heath has to pull it out. The last round, everything's in the balance for both fighters. That's right. Absolutely. And he's got much more to lose. He's got much more to lose. Good punches. Now, that puts... Jimmy a little bit ahead in that first round, in this last round already, and those two punches that he threw. He's got to do more. He's got to do more. He's letting the other guy dictate. We don't know how the judges see this. Uh, on my unofficial scorecard, I got a draw at this stage. Whoever wins this round wins the fight, as far as I'm concerned. How the officials see it, we'll wait and see. He's got to try something. He can't just keep going backwards, backwards, no. backwards. He's playing into Jimmy's hands. He's got to make a stand somewhere along the line. Because if he keeps fighting the way he's fighting. He's, he's in there throwing punches, not landing punches. And, and, and uh, Jimmy is backing him up. Jimmy Savage is backing him up. Well, he can't, he can't fight on the back move. Yeah, yeah. And he's trying to. He's got to go forward. Very interesting what happens. And so far, I've got Savage ahead in this round. Yeah, he definitely is a, a hit. He's nullifying Heath. That's right. He's not getting hit clean as much now either. He's making the moves. And, and he's starting to punch him too far out. That's a good right hand. But it doesn't seem to affect uh, Savage. He's got a very good chin. Yeah. He's got to he's attack. There's no doubt if he wants to win this fight, he's got to attack. 
because he needs to win this round to win the fight. And he's got to really start throwing. It's more or less something like I told the fighter one time, you're in such a problem now, the best thing to do is close your eyes, get your teeth and punch. Yep, that's what he's got to do. Because he's closing his space, Jimmy's closing yeah. his space all the time. He's, he's not a, enabling him to get his distance by closing him. Too much of that stuff, too. He doesn't do much of that walking around. It's serious business this round. You gotta fight this round. Yeah, he. And this thing is, he's, uh, Jimmy is doing something all the time. He's trick, he gets the notice of the judges because he's always working. He is working. He's deserved of winning this fight. There's no two ways about that. Uh, he's become lackadaisical. He's not doing anywhere right. enough. He doesn't deserve to win the fight the way he's fighting. He's not fighting like a fighter. He should be taking the fight up. He's be behind and he should be doing something. Yeah, he's just walking back. He's he can't just do it. looking. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. give the fight to Jim Savage, mate. I get that last round to Jimmy Savage. Yeah, I, I think Jim definitely won the, won the fight in my eyes. Unless, unless uh, Heath was injured, that could be his only excuse to fight as poorly as he did. Well, this will be interesting. Here comes the verdict. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a unanimous decision, but a very close one on our scorecards. Judge Bryce Birdwistle, Judge Brian Nembry, both had one point, 58-57, 58-57. The final card, Jim Slatter, had it 58-56, two points. Your winner, making it five out of five, Blue Collar, uh, the Heat, Heat Ellis. Well, very close fight. Very, very close fight. 58, 57, 58, 57, and 58, 56, which um, it was a close fight. I, I, I would have thought, uh, well, the judge's decision is final. I like the way Savage handled himself. Um, there it is. That's it for our first card, the first fight of the night. A good opening fight, Frankie. We look forward to some more. We do. Initially pretty disappointed. Heath, he's a, he's a season campaigner, ranked number 12 in Australia, so maybe Ray Whitley could sneak you into the top 10 on that performance. Awkward customer. Yeah, buddy, he was awkward, he's a southpaw, and he could, he could cop a hit, but I hit him with some good shots in the last round, and it was a close fight, it was a tough fight, I just hope everyone enjoyed it. Thanks. Okay, a big winner, five out of five. Heath, the Heat, Ellis. I'd just like to thank my sponsors, Fairtex Boxing and um, Elio Doria. Thank you. Okay, William Hadley on the scales from Queensland.